A time trial bike is typically faster than a road bike and a road bike with clip-on aero bars. But have you ever wondered by how much? It's a question we get asked here at GTN all the time. Is a TT bike worth the investment or are you simply better off buying a road bike and then putting your clip-on aero bars on it? How many watts would you save and ultimately how does that actually result when it comes to a real-life triathlon? Well, to find out, I headed to the Silverstone Sports Engineering Hub to use their wind tunnel. tunnel can replicate conditions pretty close to the real world just without the chance of any rain. Now when you're riding outdoors you obviously experience wind resistance and the faster you go the greater that resistance. So when in a wind tunnel you can replicate the speed that you'd be riding at by changing that resistance accordingly and you can even change the angles as when you are riding outside it's very unlikely that you're going to have wind coming from directly in front of you and these angles are known as your angles. Well I have to admit I was pretty excited to head to Silverstone as I've never been in a wind tunnel and I hadn't even done any aerodynamic testing. Now controlling the wind speed and direction is one part of the equation but it's the results that we're really interested in here and aerodynamics tend to be measured in CDA which is the drag coefficient basically the resistance that you and your bike are creating and the higher the resistance the higher the CDA number. The CDA can then be used to calculate the power in watts that a certain position or a certain wind angle is either losing you or gaining you so the lower the CDA number which is what you're looking for the more watts you'll be saving and then in theory the faster you'll be going for the same amount of effort. Enough of the details, let's take a look inside the wind tunnel and check out my first setup using the road bike. A road bike is a beginner's choice for triathlon and perfectly adequate, but due to the position it puts the rider in, it will give you a higher CDN number, basically because it's less aerodynamic. So I've chosen to ride on the hoods this time as it's the go-to position on a road bike. The drops would reduce the CDA, but realistically, you're unlikely to stay in that position for a full triathlon. In order to replicate a real triathlon scenario as close as possible, we decided to record data at three different speeds, 30, 40, and 50 kilometers per hour. And like I mentioned, it's unlikely that the wind will be directly head on. So on top of the control, we're going to get data at your angles of 2.5, five, and 10 degrees throughout all three wind speeds. So let's get started. <laughs> just yet because the numbers are being calculated but I have spent my few minutes in the basic position in the wind tunnel. I have to admit this isn't the scientific part but it's surprisingly cold. It's amazing um, what it's like riding in the wind. Um, but yeah next we'll be on with the aero bars and then we'll have something to compare to because at the moment these numbers don't mean a huge amount but I've got a bit more pedaling to do. The bike setups on their own obviously look different, but it's actually the rider position that plays a larger part in the overall effect on aerodynamics. In actual fact, the rider counts for around 80% of the total drag. On the road bike, you can see that my arms were wide apart and my body relatively upright, which makes for a large frontal area. And then with the clip-on aero bars, it really reduces that, making me far more aerodynamic. That's all the testing done with the road bike. It's time to take things up a level and bring out the time trial bike. A 
A time trial bike is more aerodynamic in its design, but also as a result of the position it puts the rider in. And this isn't important in aerodynamics, but the position that you can get into on a triathlon TT bike actually makes the transition from cycling to running that much easier as your hips can remain more open than they would on a road bike when you're riding with aero bars. That is testing done for the road bike versus road bike with aero bars versus the TT bike. And I'm sure this has not let me down, but it doesn't really matter how much because we know that this is going to be more aero. It's time to go and crunch the numbers and actually look at how big the differences are. As expected, the difference is notable. For a dramatic effect, let's have a look first at the 50 km an hour test. And that would actually see a massive saving from riding on the hoods on a road bike to riding on the TT bars on the road bike of 85 watts. And then take that to the next level of the TT bike and you'd actually see a 108 watt saving compared to the upright position on a road bike. Now that sounds rather huge, but what is the significance of that? And what does it look like in real life? Let's take an Ironman, for example and say you did uh, the bike leg in five and a half hours. Well, if you compare the TT bike compared to the road bike with the TT bars, that would save you four minutes. The TT bike compared to the road bike in just your standard upright position on the hood, well, that would save you a whopping 20 minutes. It was the results from the yaw angles that were most surprising though. The TT bike actually had less drag and therefore more watt savings at the larger wind angle or yaw angle than it did straight on compared to the road bike, which got progressively worse as the angles increased. And this makes the difference between the road bike and the TT significantly greater again, so when there's a crosswind and therefore the real life difference would actually be more notable. It's not purely that front end position, but a combination of the rider and the bike. To some of you, that might sound a bit dramatic and maybe leaves you questioning how you can compete against riders on a TT bike if you're just on a road bike. But please, before you despair and consider maybe remortgaging your house to get that upgrade, there are a few other things you need to think about. First up is what pace do you currently race at at the moment. The faster you go, then the more benefit you'll get from a time trial bike. But if you're fairly new to cycling, then you're probably gonna find more benefit from actually working on your fitness and your riding skills than you will from that upgrade. And then it actually takes quite a lot of time to get used to a time trial bike to find getting yourself comfortable and confident on a TT bike. So buying a new bike and having that upgrade doesn't automatically make you a better rider. But if you're maybe considering whether it's time to take that step, then why not check out our recent video of when to get all the gear, which we've had on GTN. And then we go back to the question that I mentioned at the start. What are your goals? Are you going to be mainly doing hilly races? Are you going to be doing long distance events? Do you want one bike that's going to suit everything? All of these questions I obviously can't answer for you, but you've got to take all of them into consideration and work it out for yourself. But at the end of the day, if you want to go fast on a flat course and for longer, then a TT bike is going to be the answer. Although even with that, you're still going to have to do a lot of training as it obviously it doesn't power itself and you've got to work on finding a position that you can sustain to make sure you're still aerodynamic. I have to admit that yes, the differences in all three setups are significant, but not actually as much as I expected. And I find that quite reassuring that on a road bike, if you find some clip-on aero bars and get the right position, you can still very much compete with people on a TT bike. So if you've maybe made the upgrade from riding a road bike to clip-on bars or even the next step to a TT bike, let us know how you found it and how you've got on in the comments section below. And whilst you're there, give us a like and a follow at GTN.